Hey guys, Steve here at SKS Props. Today we're going to make a beetle. Welcome to the shop. In today's video, we're going to be fabricating this little mint beetle. This guy is made all out of HD foam and foam clay, which you, of course, can find over at Blick Art Materials. Now, this is going to be a two-part series. Part one is going to be on Blick's YouTube channel, and we'll go over all of the construction techniques. Part two will be over on my channel, youtube.com slash sksprops, and it's going to go over all of the painting techniques. We've got a lot to do to put this little guy together, so let's go ahead and get started. To start off, I get some reference images and draw out the beetle to approximately the size I want on some Bristol board. This image is folded in half and cut out so I can mirror the sides. Next, I copy my pattern and trace the main body of the beetle onto some 10mm HD foam with a pencil. Foam clay is great to sculpt with, but this will give the main body some rigidity. For the legs, I'm going to cut down some metal wire and use some needle nose pliers to bend them to the approximate shape that I want. I make a hoop at the top of the leg, this will give more surface area to attach to the foam. Once I'm satisfied with how this leg looks, I then go ahead and cut out all the rest. I then use that first one as a template to bend all of the legs in approximately the same way. Now I know I'll do a lot of adjusting once they're glued on, but this gives me a good start. Bob Smith super glue and some accelerator is used to attach the wires to the foam. To make sure that all these points are reinforced, I go in with some 2mm HD foam and glue that on top of all the wire loops. Now all those points are plenty strong to hold up the beetle. This is where I can start looking at how the legs are going to be positioned and move them a little bit more. To bulk up the bottom of the beetle, I make a custom template out of some 10mm HD foam. This is also glued into place. This is to ensure that we're just not using a ton of the foam clay, and that will help it dry faster. This same principle of bulking up using the HD foam is also used on the top of the beetle. Here I'm making the armor that's right behind the head. This piece along with the wings are also transferred onto some 10mm HD foam and then glued into place. Now as I'm bulking this up, I'm still keeping the road map of where all these pieces intersect with each other. That way when I'm sculpting, I know exactly where they're going to go. After all these sections have been glued on, it's time to start working on the head. For this step, it's not actually bulked up too much. The 10mm HD foam is just there for a base. Foam clay will be used to round the entire thing out. After all the sections have cured, I can go in and start to refine the shape. This is done using a medium grit sanding drum on my Dremel rotary tool. The trick here is to take enough away, but still have an initial shape that the foam clay is going to be able to adhere to. Now with foam clay, you can sculpt with it on its own, or in this case, we're going to add it to the foam that we already have. Now to do that, we're going to wet the surface, and this will help the foam clay adhere properly. I like to sculpt adding a little bit of material at a time. Also, I've got some silicone tools and some wooden tools that we're going to use to help move the material around. As I'm adding foam clay, I'm constantly putting my road maps back. That way I know exactly where all these pieces need to end up in the end. Now foam clay does take about 24 hours to cure, so in this case, for day one, our goal is to get the entire piece covered. After the body has its basic shape, I move on to the legs. Now I want to add more material than I think I'm going to need because I'm going to sand this down to get the final shape. If you want certain sections to start to blend together, once again you can use your silicone tip tools. I would recommend to go ahead and dip them in water. This will keep the foam clay from sticking to them. Notice that I work on a section and move on to something else. Because this is an air drying material that allows it to skin over, and so when I hold it in a different way, it doesn't disrupt the sculpt that I already have. I'm just moving down the legs, blocking out basic shapes. Again, the sanding portion of this build is really going to be where we define all this. For the eyes and details on this beetle's face, I'm just going to roll up some foam clay into basic shapes and put it off to the side to dry. Now when it comes to sculpting with foam clay, there's lots of different ways to do it. This is just my preferred method of letting it dry, adding another layer, letting it dry, add another layer. So, as I let the entire piece dry out a little bit more, I start to work on the antenna. Just like the legs, it's made out of a wire armature underneath and then wrapped with the foam clay. The foam clay on the beetle is too soft right now to start sanding on it, so I mark all my details with a ballpoint pen, that way I know exactly what I'm doing tomorrow. 
About a day later and this beetle is ready for its first pass at sanding. Now foam clay sands extremely well so I start knocking down some of the high points with a sanding sponge. I should note that this process also produces a lot of very fine particles so make sure that you are wearing a respirator and have eye protection. I decided I need to be a little more aggressive with the sanding, so in this case I'm breaking out my rotary tool. Now you want to be very careful when using this on foam clay because the rotary tool can remove a lot of material very fast. So I'm very lightly touching the surface with the rotary tool, removing just a little bit of material at a time. Once I determine where those shapes need to go, then I'll press a little bit firmer every time I go around. But with this type of material, it's not like carving into foam. It's very, very soft. Now I am definitely a subtractive sculptor, so that's why I like putting on more material than I need and then I'll come back with a rotary tool or with knives and cut down the foam to the size that I need it to be. You can really see how this technique works on the legs by adding all that material in the beginning. Now I can go in and refine those shapes. To separate the sections a little more, I use a pin file to sharpen the details. Switching back to a softer sanding sponge, here you can really see the striation difference between the rotary tool and the sanding sponge. Using a mix of the pin file and some sandpaper, it really starts to separate all these individual sections. For more intricate areas that the sanding sponge couldn't get to, I used a smaller and smoother barrel on my rotary tool. This barrel was especially used to detail all those little pieces on the bottom of the beetle and around its legs. The pin file was once again used to put all the details in on the antennas and then these were marked and put into place using super glue. For the eyes I have one oval of foam clay that is dried for about a day so it's set up enough to cut through. This will give me two perfect halves for either side. Now all of these little facial details are individual little pieces of foam clay. These are all put into place using some tweezers. All those little details that are on the head really brings this beetle together. As a final pass, I really wanted to detail a shell. So to do that, I used a round over stone bit on a portable Dremel. The thing to notice here is that I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want to press through that layer that is already cured. All right guys, well that does it for the fabrication side of our little beetle here. Now remember, this is just a part one. Part two is gonna be over on my channel, which is youtube.com slash sksprops. There I'll be painting this guy up using the brand new FX line from Plaid. Now if you guys are enjoying these videos, be sure to give them a thumbs up and share them with your friends and family. And if you are building with HD foam, be sure to tag Blick and SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because we love seeing your progress. Until next time, thanks for stopping by.